Alejandro R. Yadad Bikera, Wikipedia article audio. Alejandro Yadad Bikera is a Colombian Canadian physician whose mission is to enable people, either as individuals or groups, to live healthy and happy lives, full of love, and with no regrets, until the last breath. Yadad's research and innovation work seeks to identify and connect people, knowledge, and tools across traditional boundaries to create a pandemic of health, while eliminating unnecessary suffering, and to improve the capacity of humans to imagine, create, and promote new and better approaches to living, healing, working and learning as part of a sustainable planet. His projects follow a radical glical innovation approach designed to deal with distress fueled by high levels of uncertainty, especially in the presence of life-threatening conditions, and to enable people and organizations to achieve maximum levels of health, happiness, and tranquility through the judicious use of state-of-the-art approaches to scenario planning, design thinking and crisis management. Early Life the Yadad Scale Yadad is the founder of the Centre for Global E-Health Innovation at the University of Toronto where he is also a physician, professor in the Dalalana School of Public Health, and director of the Institute for Global Health Equity and Innovation. Dr. Yadad was born in Medellin, and grew up in Monteria, Colombia. His parents were Enrique Yadad, a physician, and Ketty Bikera, an entrepreneur, whose families had migrated from the Middle East to South America at the beginning of the 1900s. Following the separation of his parents, at age 14, he moved with his younger brother, Enrique, to Cartagena, where they completed high school studies at La Esperanza School the top institution in the country at the time. Inspired to become a physician by the example of his father and his maternal grandfather, who were very compassionate doctors, he obtained his medical degree in 1986 from Pontifical Xavierian University in Bogota. While still a medical student, driven by curiosity triggered by questions posed to him by small children in a very deprived school of Bogota, he collected the largest data set on jargon, chemical composition, and clinical implications of cocaine base abuse in Colombia. By the time he was 20, he had become an internationally sought-after speaker, and an advisor to the Colombian Ministry of Health on drug-related matters. Before initiating his residence in anesthesiology and intensive care at Pontifical Xavierian University, at age 22, he published his first textbook in this area, with Dr. Mario Ruiz, a Colombian anesthesiologist whom he regarded as a father figure. This was the first textbook in neuroanesthesiology and neurosurgical intensive care published in Spanish. In 1989, during the last year of his residency program, Yadad received a British Council scholarship that enabled him to become a clinical and research fellow at the Oxford Pain Relief Unit, Nuffield Department of Anesthetics, University of Oxford, where he gained experience in the management of complex pain cases and end-of-life care issues while conducting research on advanced analgesic techniques. His groundbreaking work on the responsiveness of neuropathic pain to opioids made him the recipient, in 1992, of the Overseas Research Student Award from the Committee of Vice-Chancellors and Principals of the Universities of the United Kingdom that same year, he became a doctoral student at Balliol College, University of Oxford where he received, in 1994, a Doctor of Philosophy degree in clinical medicine after completing a thesis entitled Meta-Analysis of Randomized Clinical Trials in Pain. Relief, becoming one of the first physicians in the world with a doctorate on knowledge synthesis. His supervisors were Henry J. McQuay, professor in pain relief, 
University of Oxford, and Sir Ian Chalmers, the father of the Cochrane Collaboration. His examiners were D.R.S. David Sackett, one of the founders of the evidence-based medicine movement, and Adrian Grant, then director of the Health Services Research Unit at the University of Aberdeen. Dr. Yadad's doctoral work led to the creation of new tools to distill high-quality health-related information, new methods to build specialized bibliographic databases to support health-related decisions, innovative approaches the management of big data in health care, and the validation of the most widely used tool to assess the quality of clinical trials in the world, the Yadad scale. Life in Canada the Yadad Scale, sometimes known as Yadad Scoring or the Oxford Quality Scoring System, is a procedure to independently assess the methodological quality of a clinical trial. The Yadad Scale appears to produce robust and valid results in an increasing number of empirical studies. The scale includes three items that are directly related to bias reduction, randomization, blinding, description of withdrawals and dropouts. These are presented as questions to elicit yes or no answers and produces scores from 0 to 5. A trial could be judged as having poor quality if it is awarded 2 points or fewer. Studies that obtain 2 or fewer points have been shown to produce treatment effects which are 35% larger, on average than those produced by trials with three or more points. Although some concerns have been expressed about the inter-observer reliability of the assessments, the scale has been cited over 10,000 times in the biomedical literature and has been used successfully to identify systematic differences in over 1,000 reviews of trials in many areas of health care. While at Oxford, in the early 1990s, Dr. Yadad met Dr. Murray and Keane who had recently co-authored his opus Effective Care in Pregnancy and Childbirth with Ian Chalmers and Mark Kearse. Dr. and Keane persuaded Yadad to continue his research at McMaster University, in Canada, where he stayed from 1995 until 1999. During this period, he was chief of the Health Information Research Unit. CEO Director of the Canadian Cochrane Network and Centre, Associate Medical Director of the Programme in Evidence-Based Care of Cancer Care Ontario, Founding Director of the McMaster Evidence-Based Practice Centre, and Professor in the Department of Clinical Epidemiology and Biostatistics. Revisiting Key Concepts In 2000, Dr. Yadad moved to Toronto, as the Rose Family Chair in Supportive Care, Director of the Program in eHealth Innovation and Professor in the Departments of Health Policy, Management and Evaluation, and Anesthesia. During the following five years, he led the creation of the Center for Global eHealth Innovation, a simulator of the future of the health system to study and optimize the use of information and communication technologies before their introduction into the health system. The construction of the centre was supported by the Canada Foundation for Innovation and the University Health Network, where it is located. During the same time, he led the development of virtual clinical tools to transform the encounter between patients and health professionals and new ways to use ISTs to respond to major public health threats and to enable the public to shape the health system and society. In 2002, Dr. Yadad was named the Canada Research Chair in eHealth Innovation, which he held until December 31, 2015. In 2008, he initiated the People, Health Equity and Innovation Group, in Toronto to explore ways to level the playing field for disadvantaged groups in society through the innovative use of information and communication technologies. In 2008, 
inspired by a personal experience as a patient with a potential diagnosis of cancer, Dr. Yadad wondered if it would be possible to be ill and healthy at the same time. This apparent paradox led to a three-year-long a global conversation supported by the British Medical Journal. This effort, which finally involved an international group of experts, yielded a reconceptualization of the meaning of health as the capacity to adapt and self-manage in the face of physical, mental and social challenges, a shift away from a disease-focused approach which is motivating deep reflection and changes in health systems worldwide. Global Activities Based on the success of this effort, Dr. Yadad started other collaborative groups that are now revisiting and reconceptualizing other complex terms such as harm, happiness, love and a good death. Global Health Equity and Innovation In 1992, Yadad became the founder and convener of the Colombian Science and Technology Network, which was formally registered soon after his move to Canada in 1995. This network was a branch of the Caldas Network, a global initiative sponsored by the Administrative Department of Science, Technology and Innovation of Colombia which promoted communication and collaboration between Colombian scientists working in the country, and members of the Colombia diaspora worldwide through the nascent World Wide Web. Unleashing a Pandemic of Health, Love and Happiness In 1994, he became one of the founding members of a group interested in increasing the role of members of the public in research and evidence-based decision-making which later became the Cochrane Consumer Network, and of the Cochrane Pain, Palliative and Supportive Care Working Group, which promotes high-quality syntheses of research knowledge in these areas, worldwide. In 1998, Yadad was the founding chair of the Working Group Working Group of the American Medical Informatics Association, CO founding and CO chairing a similar group within the International Medical Informatics Association the next year. A good death for all, what would it take? In 1998, his best-selling book Randomised Controlled Trials was published and launched by the British Medical Journal as part of the 50th anniversary of clinical trials in healthcare becoming a medical bestseller in the United Kingdom that year. A new edition, CO written with Dr. Murray and Keane, was published in 2007, with a list of musings reflecting their concerns about the abuse of clinical trials and biomedical research evidence in general in the form of musings. From 2005 to 2009, Yadad acted as an advisor to the World Health Organization as a member of its Global Observatory for a Health as Strategic Advisory Group of Experts, representing the American continent. In 2006, in close collaboration with Dr. Julio Lorca from Spain, he was instrumental in the creation of the Spanish eHealth Network and the development of Revista eSalud the leading journal and portal in the Hispanic world focused on e-health. The same year, with support from the Andalusian Ministry of Health and the Andalusian School of Public Health, Yadad designed and created the Global Observatory of Innovative Practices for Complex Chronic Disease Management, which became the largest collection in the world of research evidence and organizations dealing the most important source of unnecessary suffering and costs in the health system. From 2006 to 2010, Dr. Yadad was the founding chair of the board of directors of the Institute for Innovation on Human Well-Being, in Malaga, Spain, an effort funded by the Andalusian government and the European Union to support innovative projects to promote optimal levels of quality of life for all, worldwide. In 2007, 
he was invited by the British Medical Journal to write an essay highlighting the role of computers as one of the 15 most important breakthroughs in medicine since 1840, when the journal was published for the first time, as part of a commemorative issue marking the journal's transformational efforts at the dawn of the 21st century. Books In 2010, he chaired and convened the Global People-Centered eHealth Innovation Forum during the European Ministerial eHealth Conference, and the International Forum Youth-Led Innovation and Entrepreneurship in Brussels and Extremadura, two events designed to promote collaborative efforts among leading groups interested in optimizing human well-being through the innovative use of ISTs. In late 2010, he co-chaired the first international summit on human-centered and family-focused e-health in China. Awards and Recognitions In 2012, Dr. Yadad was honored with the Pioneers for Change Award, which recognizes Canadians born abroad who have made extraordinary contributions to the country. In 2013, he started the largest effort in the world to collect data on the self-reported health status of humans, and on new approaches to the assessment of health. This work acted as a key piece of the foundational theme creating and spreading health. To enable the next generation of global citizens to question, challenge and redress the structures of power and privilege underlying health inequities, to forge, incubate and accelerate scalable and sustainable interventions that eradicate differences in health status that can be traced to unequal conditions that are systemic and avoidable, to catalyze collaborations across traditional boundaries that improve health equitably worldwide, to develop a pool of resources that is accessible to support community-driven social innovation aimed at the intersection with health and equity to provide a space that legitimizes the unasked questions, the elephants in the room, the taboos, the contradictions, and the tensions that exacerbate inequities. In 2015, Dr. Yadad was selected as the Interim Director of the Institute for Global Health Equity and Innovation at the University of Toronto. Inspired by the Global Summit, this university-wide entity, which is also housed at the Dalalana School of Public Health, has as its vision a world in which every person and community regardless of gender, age, race, political views, socioeconomic status, religious beliefs, cultural background, or geographic location can have the same opportunities to live a long and healthy life, as part of a sustainable planet. On January 1st, 2016, Dr. Yadad became the formal director of the Institute, where he is pursuing this vision guided by the following strategic objectives. The work within the foundational theme of the Institute led to the organization of the 2014 Global Summit Creating a Pandemic of Health, hosted by the Dalalana School of Public Health, University of Toronto, at the Mars Discovery District. The summit triggered a series of international initiatives that led to presentations at the World Congress on Public Health in 2015, the publication of seminal articles and the designation of Colombia as its first epicenter. Personal Life In 2015, Work began with the National Federation of Coffee Growers as a living laboratory to test and evaluate tools based on the theory of salutogenesis designed to create health at the individual and collective level. This effort was supported by a database with information on self-reported health and over 1,000 independent variables from over 2 million people from 116 countries and reviews of over 4,000 publications of research studies. By the end of 2017, the initiative had shown how health could be generated through collaborative efforts with over 3,000 employees in the NFC, 
while yielding interactive tools to assess baseline and ongoing levels of self-reported health, identify challenges, stressors and tensions faced by workers, map health assets available internally and externally to the organization, develop individual and collective salutogenic portfolios, and to train a new category of health professional known as Saludogenerators In December 2017, with participation of the Colombian Minister of Health, Alejandro Gaviria, and the President of the NFC, Roberto Velas, a book describing the process was launched. Under the title, Unleashing a Pandemic of Health from the Workplace, Believing is Seeing, the publication also outlined the basic conceptual elements leading to the creation and spread of health, and its overall goal was to make visible a largely invisible and obvious fact, that health is pandemic, and that there are abundant resources to enable every human to have a healthy life, until the last breath. It also acted as an invitation to believe that this is possible and to join a growing number of people willing to make it happen, using work environments of all kinds as their epicenters. Similar efforts are now underway, following a similar methodology, to explore ways in which happiness and love could be created and turned into social contagions. As every living person will eventually die, it is essential for all societies to ensure that everyone is able to live well until the end. How we care for the dying is a litmus test of a good health system and a responsible society. Like birth, death is a part of life, and yet most people around the world are dying badly, typically in an institution, away from their loved ones, in pain, or receiving outdated and misaligned services designed primarily for curative purposes. Most people facing the end of their lives are likely to receive overzealous medical treatments that cause much more harm and avoidable suffering, than good, at huge financial costs. This initiative seeks to assemble and conduct the most comprehensive synthesis of the literature, policies, and experiences around the world on the meaning of dying well, to gather a global network of thought leaders and organizations, and engage them in the ongoing refinement of the minimum and ideal criteria for dying well, and to develop a global network of living labs focused on monitoring, reconceptualizing, and advocating for the implementation of the criteria for dying well as they evolve. Worldwide In 1991, Yadad received a commission of the European Community's Technical Cooperation Scholarship in support of his work on pain relief, which was followed by the Overseas Research Student Award, Committee of Vice-Chancellors and Principals of the Universities of the United Kingdom in 1992. In 1994, his doctoral thesis was the subject of a special publication by the NHS Research and Development Directorate for Anglia and Oxford. In 1997, received the Order of Knight Commander by Union Javeriana, Jesuit Order. The same year, he was given the National Health Research Scholar Award from the National Health Research and Development Programme, Canada, which supported his work on evidence-based decision-making, e-health and public engagement until 2002. In 1998, he was selected as one of Canada's Top 40 Under 40 Award, an initiative that recognizes those who have displayed extraordinary vision and leadership, innovation and achievement, community impact, substantial contributions to Canadian society, and led important growth and development strategies in the country before the age of 40. That year, he was awarded the Jose Maria Cordoba Science and Technology Medal, Government of Córdoba, Colombia, and received the Premier's Research Excellence Award, Ontario Ministry of Energy, Science and Technology. From 2000 to 2010, 
he held the Rose family chair in supportive care at the University of Toronto, and since 2001, the Canada Research Chair in eHealth Innovation at the University of Toronto and University Health Network. In 2001, he was the Spinoza Professor at Academic Medical Centre and Faculty of Medicine, University of Amsterdam, and the first Art McGregor Visiting Lecturer, at the University of Victoria in British Columbia, Canada. The same year, he was featured by Time magazine as one of seven new Canadians who will shape the country in the 21st century. The following year, the same magazine selected him as one of the six most innovative medical researchers in Canada. In 2002, Yadad also received the new Pioneers Award in Science and Technology, presented by Skills for Change, Canada, in recognition for his contributions as a new immigrant. In 2003, together with Martha, his wife, and his daughters, Yadad received the Artistic Director's Award for Most Important Contribution to the Nutcracker Ballet by the Canadian Ballet Youth Ensemble and the Hamilton Conservatory for the Arts. That same year, he received the American Academy of Pain Medicine slash Pfizer Visiting Professorship Award, Johns Hopkins University. In 2004, Yadad was given the Canadian Latin American Achievement Award for the most important contribution to Latin American-Canadian relations by a Hispanic person. That year, the Revista e Salud was selected as one of the best 100 ideas in the health sector by Spain's Diario Medico. In 2005, Yadad was selected by the top 40 under 40 alumni as one of the best of the best for achievements in health and science, and by his peers in Colombia as the scientist who probably has had the greatest impact in the country's history. He was also identified as the scientist with the greatest impact in the history of Colombia by Portfolio magazine and El Tiempo newspaper. His virtual communication centre was recognised as the most innovative project of the year by Cancer Care Ontario's Access to Cancer Services initiatives. In 2006, he received the Distinguished Lecturer Award from Health Canada's Chief Scientist for his contributions to health and the health system. In 2007, Dr. Yadad became the first Hispanic Fellow of the Canadian Academy of Health Sciences, and was selected by media and community leaders as one of Canada's ten most influential Hispanic Canadians. In 2008, he received the Order of the Congress and the José María Córdoba Medal in his native Colombia. He was also given the Chief Scientist's Distinguished Lecturer Award by Health Canada. In 2007, he joined the board of directors of the Royal Agricultural Winter Fair, the largest indoor agri-food event in the world, as a result of his contributions as leader of the Journey to Your Good Health, an initiative that brought together innovations from the private, non-profit and community sectors that promoted optimal health and introduced over 150,000 members of the public each year to the best knowledge on healthy eating and living. That year, he was selected as the inaugural speaker at the annual Schneiderman Lecture, Toronto Rehabilitation Institute, as the first Hispanic Fellow of the Canadian Academy of Health Sciences, and as one of the ten most influential Hispanic Canadians selected by media and community leaders in Canada. In 2008, he received the Bicentennial Medal, Antonio de la Torre y Miranda, City of Monteria, Colombia, the Great Cross Medal, Government of Córdoba, the Gold Medals for Lifelong Achievement, Universities of Córdoba and Sinu, Colombia, and the Order of the Congress, Government of Colombia. In 2009, 
Yadad was given the Felix Restrepo Medal for Contributions to Science and Society by Xavier Ryan University in Colombia. He received this recognition again in 2012, in the category of Learning and Education. In 2012, he also was appointed as Honorary Fellow, School of Clinical Sciences and Community Health. University of Edinburgh, Scotland and honoured with the inaugural Pioneers for Change Award, which recognises Canadians born abroad who have made extraordinary contributions to the country. In 2016, he received an honorary doctorate in laws from St. Francis Xavier University in Canada. In 2018, he received an honorary doctorate from Open University of Catalonia in Barcelona, Spain. In 1988, Yadad married Martha Garcia, whom he had met during their first day at university in 1980. They had been dating since 1981, when they were studying medicine and biochemistry, respectively. Garcia acted as Yadad's research assistant on his cocaine-related work. They have two daughters, Alia and Tamen, who were born in Oxford, England, and adopted Jesse Venegas Garcia, Martha's niece, in 2000. Yadad and his wife live in Toronto, Ontario, Canada.